Why hello guys, it's James from Six Gamers. I promise these creepy pre-video voiceovers with black screens aren't going to become a regular thing, but the sound quality at the beginning of this video was awful, so I thought I'd better record an intro for it. Basically, it's a pack opening for the new Angoro expansion with a little vlog elements to it. It was recorded a little while ago before I had in any internet and before I knew that I would be releasing a law of the cards before this. So there's some grovelly, I promise I'm getting the law of the cards out towards the end of this video as well. Basically, it just updates you on a few things and you get to see a pack opening. One thing I did forget is that we're going to probably try and start streaming soon. I'll be back mentioning that again when I'm more certain that it's actually going ahead. But until then, creepy voiceover out. Ooh, electric craziness. And our first pack is a load of old shit. Now, some of the uh, Ungoro cards I won't know particularly well because I've been away for a little while. For example, this one. I didn't know the Frozen Crusher existed. After this minion attacks, freeze it. So... The reason I have been away of late is because I have been moving house and as a result it has meant I haven't been able to put out one of those Ungoro Laws in quite a while which was a bit annoying for me and is probably annoying to you guys as well. All I can do is apologise for that uh, but I just haven't had the time to cut or the internet to come back uh, to my parents' house and go, oh, hey, guys, do you mind if I just use your internet so that I can make an episode of Lore of the Cards? Thanks. Which is what I'm doing now. I'm using my parents' internet because my internet isn't up until the 11th. Anyway, Direhorn Hatchling. Taunt, Death Rattle. Shuffle a 6-9 Direhorn with Taunt into your deck. Okay. That seems pretty good. Ornery Direhorn... Okay, that one looks fun. Molten Reflection, choose a friendly minion. Armor and big taunt card. Sweet. So I'm moving in to a one bedroom flat with my wife because she recently came over to the UK and we've been sorting all that out. Hi guys, it's James here. This is a point where the fuzz gets unbearable, so I'm just going to fill you in on what's coming up. I'm basically explaining the Threshodon's connection to Murlocs. Take it away, James. It's in a dungeon with a Murloc boss, one of the few Murloc bosses in Warcraft. Um, there aren't too many Murloc dungeon bosses, despite Murlocs being, like, the most popular race in the whole game. Ah, oh, we have the Tortolum Prime... Ah, oh, got that already, mate. As does most people probably watching this video. Rockpool Hunter. Give a friendly Murloc plus one plus one. Yeah, pretty decent card, if you want to make a Murloc deck. Which I don't. Tortoil and Primus. Battlecry, discover a spell and cast it with a random target. Ho oh, ho ho. So, that's Yog Mark 2. And not as crazy as Yog. Molten Blaze. That, I thought that card looked quite fun, so that's quite cool. Tarlurk, a taunt. Has plus three attack during your opponent's turn. Huh. That's pretty cool. Interesting um, mechanic that. Discover a card from your opponent's class. Meh. For a card called Hallucination, you'd think, oh, maybe it could be cooler than that, but yeah, apparently not. Oh, Meteor, the ridiculous looking shaman spell. Oh no, it's Mage! I'm thinking Volcano, that's what I'm thinking of. Deal 15 damage to a minion and 3 damage to adjacent ones. Do you ever need to deal 15 damage to a minion? I'm sure we'll find out. I could, I again, remember, rubbish at the game. Uh, so, the Tortolan, the, these guys that keep coming up, are a entirely new race added uh, through Hearthstone. So it's actually what we know of this race. is basically what we saw from those little vlogs the community team let out. That they're just a happy, friendly guy. This guy doesn't look too friendly. And we'll obviously learn about the race from their cards as well. So it, it would appear that Tortolan can be druids of some form because they can transform into two different forms with two different properties like the druids of the claw do. So that's quite interesting. I wonder if um, Fandral works with that guy as well and what he look, comes out looking like. <laughs> Could be quite interesting. So also... 
the bugs that you notice within Angoro, they are within uh, the Warcraft zone as well. They are the Silithid, uh, which are closely connected to one of the insect races loyal to the old gods, the Karaji. And the Silithid are basically your, uh, well, are the basic foot soldiers of the Karaji forces. Uh, they can fly, some of them, and they also scuttle along the ground as well. Not particularly intelligent creatures, uh, but yeah, get a lot of them in one place, and they become pretty dangerous. Oh, Tar Lord. Oh, well, hello, minion that you need to do a lot of damage to. It has plus four attack during your opponent's turn. Did everyone get a Tar Guy of some sort in order to have that quite cool mechanic put in? That is a stoly, stoly card, isn't it? A Stonehill Defender. Hmm. I'm just thinking, where where is Stonehill? That'll be interesting to find out. I'll cry, discover a Taunt Minion. Okay, yeah, that's a pretty decent one if you want slow down in your deck. Anyway, shall we continue on opening a little bit faster? Radiant Ella, a humongous Razor Leaf. Can't attack. We've got a new Ancient Watcher guy there. Oh, a Razor Petal Lasher there within the Angoro area as well. Uh, just, oh, screw you. <laughs> so, other things that have been going on for the channel. Like I said, we will get back to... Hmm, Fire Plume Phoenix, cool. We'll get back to the Angoro Luring. And then hopefully as well, because they're actually relatively easy to write in comparison to each one because I'm only coming up with like a paragraph at most of law for each thing just a few sentences maybe uh, then I will endeavor to possibly get doing a bigger law in the background as well one of the big laws I really want to do but first of all I need to do some research and I need to actually think how I'm going to do it without it with it running smoothly as well, is I want to do the lore of all the dragon aspects in one long series that obviously culminates in one big video that I release everything, all of the dragon aspects together in. That's, that's some really cool art, I like that, for a relatively boring card. <laughs> but that is some awesome art, I like that. But yeah, getting Alex Straza, Ysera, Nos Dormu, Deathwing, Malagos and oh, what's his name? The second blue aspect. Um, I, w I will kick myself that I haven't remembered him right now. Coriolstras is that, or is Coriolstras Alex Strauss's mate? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I'll hopefully remember him as I'm going along. Uh, giant wasp. Another Silithid there, uh, like really over the top Silithid. And then we have the Salrock, which are actually native to the continent of Pandaria. Not Angoro, but it seems the Hearthstone team have decided this is the time to include Salrock within the game. Ooh, a charged Devil Saw. Obviously, this is just tying into the more elemental theme they've gone with in uh, Angoro, the, the fact that it's charged, but obviously Devil Saw. I, d I don't know why I say obviously. Not all Hearthstone players have played well, but Devil Saw are found within Angoro as well. Charge Battle Cry can't attack heroes this turn. Okay. Is that a good card? I don't really know. Um, again, rubbish at game, so don't really know. Cool. Um, I'm still trying to remember the name of the second blue dragon aspect because what happened is Malagos kind of went a bit mad uh, and then as a result adventurers killed him within a raid dungeon in World of Warcraft. Oh my god that looks cool. I mean those stats are making me think it's probably shit, but let's have a look. Valkyrie reduced the cost of elemental in your hand by one. Oh, actually, so not dog shit, it's got to be said. But, oh, that is a cool golden effect. I like that. Oh, 
Uh, but yeah, Malagos was killed, and then there were two sort of possibility um, blue aspects. One was Ergos, um, Malagos's son, well, like direct son or something like that, because technically they're all his sons and daughters, the blue flight. Uh, but obviously Ergos was more tightly connected to Malagos. Um, and also the guy that I can't fucking remember, which is really annoying me. He's a massive lore character. He even has like a little bit of a oh, 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 love thing going on with Jaina at one point. Um, dragon. Oh yeah, thanks. Thanks for the epic that's exactly the same. Free from Amber. Discover a minion that costs eight or more. Summon it. Okay. That's interesting. And you get three choices. That's got to be really good. I say it's got to be really good. Again, rubbish again. That's got to be a pretty good card. The fact that you discover one that's eight or more and you get a choice of three. I mean, the likelihood of you getting crap there and it is quite low and you've got that unpredictability kind of going on with it. So you can counter your opponent's turns, which is quite cool. Oh, we have a legendary. Ooh, Liara the Sun Shard. I mean, it's not a lore character, I can tell you that straight up. But that's quite an interest quite an interesting piece of art. Uh quite reminiscent of some of the primals that you see within um Dranor in WoW. Well, I mean you have to cover up the arms, but it's got the same sort of silhouette, these kind of like plant men that you found within Dranor. Uh, whenever you cast a spell, add a random priest spell to your hand. Yeah, sounds like a pretty decent card. Apparently, I attract priest legendaries, and I never play priest. So I've got this, I've got Velen, and I also got the one from Gadget Zan as well, the Ethereal, that I can't remember his name, because my memory is great. Anyway, I'm still going on about uh, Malagos and... Um, the guy, I can't remember how he became an aspect. Um, but it turns out Ergos was working with Deathwing, who's big, evil, nasty uh, dragon aspect. So in the end, that other guy got crowned the aspect. I mean, most people would have probably just brushed over that and gone, oh yeah, I don't remember his name. I just keep bringing it up again and again just to really highlight my lack of knowledge <laughs> and the fact that I've forgotten the name of a really important character. Go me. Oh, that's quite cool, little gold. I mean, it is dribbling a lot. That is a lot of saliva. I'm quite impressed with the amount of dribble. He just apparently around somewhere that smells quite bad. But yeah, an impressive amount of dribble there. So, other things you may have noticed with the channel is the uh, songs that have started to crop up. The excellent cover of Ben Brode's Ungoro, The Journey. Uh, one of the comments was, nowhere near as good as the original, but then again, what covers are? So, can't take offence of that, can I? Uh, but the plan with the songs is, every now and then, people say, oh, can I donate to the channel? Do you have a Patreon? That kind of thing. Um, and I'm always slow to do that kind of thing because first of all I don't think a Patreon would be worth this channel's while and it would just be like maybe one or two people going oh there you go have a pound or a dollar and then we'd earn like three dollars a month and that would just make me just a little bit sad and go oh we're no one likes us <laughs> would be uh, I've got I've got some issues with self-confidence already so I will uh, not undermine them anymore but what the songs are for is Occasionally, if someone wants to go, I want to chuck you a few pence or something like that. The songs are 50p on Bandcamp. You buy a song, you get something in return as well, but it's also not shutting off content from anyone else. So everyone else can still see the songs on the channel whenever they want, but it means if you wanted to add it to your iPod or anything like that, you can actually take it around with you. Not that they're like the most banging songs ever right now. Um because the recording quality is not quite there. But I think Angoro was an improvement, which we're really happy with. A Sudden Genesis. Oh, summon copies of your damaged minions. Isn't that... No. 
What was um, the blood clone thing in Warrior? Was that for summon copies of your damage minions? Hmm. Or was it slightly different, that one? It was probably slightly different. I'm probably remembering it wrong. Gold. Yeah, that's, that's our basic thinking with that. And I've been waiting for ages in order to do a vlog like this, in order to say, well, that's my plan with the songs. They're just a way of donating to the channel, really. And they're all lore-based. Well, <laughs> except Ungoro the Journey. Uh, they're all aiming to be lore-based, so they still tell you a bit of the story of each thing that comes up. And as of yet, uh, at, at the moment, sorry, I'm just trying to keep it down to fairly basic lore characters. So the lore of the cards episode would have been like a minute on them uh, if if you're being honest with the amount of law so for example Ragnaros the Light Lord if you're being honest with the amount of law what it is oh Elder Longneck uh, Battlecry if you're holding a minion five more attack adapt <laughs> uh, if you're being honest with that Ragnaros the Light Lords Laura, is it's basically a what if scenario. If the old gods came back, like found Ragnaros's corpse somewhere and then injected him with evil power, the evil meets the evil, and as we all know with math mathematics, a double negative equals a positive, and as a result, they accidentally create Ragnaros the Light Lord who stands against them rather than with them. So, we've got another pack going, and our what, was, what else have we done? We've done a Noyatron, of course, not really too much lore with him. He was a Hearthstone creation, uh, which was just basically a gnome invented a really annoying robot, and it got him kicked out of town. That was basically the lore of a Noyatron. Vicious Fledgling, after a minion attacks a... After this minion attacks a hero, adapt. Okay, so if you have good board control, it'll be great. If you don't, then it's meh. Opening up more packs. Now to try and give you some real insight um, with the mechanics of each card, because obviously that's what you come to this channel for, my amazing insight. So yeah, uh, feeding time, uh, deal 3 damage to a minion, summon 3 1-1 one, one pet Um Yeah, yeah, uh, what do you use that for? Um, is It's basically implosion, isn't it? It's a not as good implosion, but with pterodaxes instead of imps. Um, which I, which there they they haven't got the law right. At least if the Warcraft RPG is to be believed, because apparently pterodaxes are solitary creatures that only meet up for mating season. Whereas here, there's loads of them. So Hearthstone team, if that law is actually canonical, <laughs> which it with the RPG they do often state that it isn't. But if it was. You got it wrong. That art is wrong. Anyway, uh, Devil Saw Egg is obviously a Nerubian egg, but it gives you a better thing that comes from it, and it has more life in order to kill, I believe. So let's actually... Longnecks as well are quite interesting addition, because they're a dinosaur type that hasn't existed uh, up until now. Uh, there's our Tolvir friend. Tolvir are a Titanforged race. Uh, which means they're basically made from the stone and earth of Azeroth itself. But Tolvir was second generation Titanforged after the old gods had been imprisoned within Azeroth. Um, could go into that again, but I'm already brought up enough on how many times I mentioned the old gods, so we're going to try and keep them out of this pack opening as much as possible from now on. Okay, rocks, they're, they're birds. Is that, it looks like that, that particular rock has two heads as well, which is quite interesting. Good stuff. And Tortolan summoned two Wub Wub Raptors. Oh, so he's stealing raptor eggs. Bastard. Next one, please. What do we got? Have we got anything interesting? Have we got anything new? No, we've got that gold thing, though, of... That's that's a bit of a meh gold thing. You could have had them flapping around, but no, he's just like going. Har, har, which makes that guy look a bit 
stronger within the art where he's meant to be getting feasted upon by millions and millions of pterodaxes. But whatever, whatever, I'm not the guy who's doing the golden animations. You want to know why I'm not the guy that's doing the golden animations? One, Blizzard hasn't hired me, and two, I lack any talent to do that, so, yeah. Okay, all cards we've seen before. Your weapons become poisonous, was that? That's quite cool. Basically, instant kill from weaponry. Nice. Oh, Hot Spring Guardian. <laughs> I don't know why that made me chuckle. Uh, restore three health. Oh, that's, that's a good card, isn't it? Just heal things, get taunt, and also... Yeah, that's a pretty sweet card, I think. He thinks. So, obviously, because they mentioned in the Angoro openings that each class had a certain flavour in a dinosaur that represented them, that sort of thing. It looks like Shaman obviously have the elementals that are their representative within Angoro, uh, for obvious reasons. So yeah, we're getting a lot of doubles right now, which is uh, really fun for a pack opening. There we go, we've got a new one, Earthen Scales. Give a friendly minion 1-1, one, one, then gain armour equal to its attack. So that's kind of a um, druid control druid card I'm guessing and then oh look at him oh he's having a little chuckle and then there's the volcano in the background nice oh and the shiny stinger shiny stinger and then we open our packet and then what else do we have we have loads of stuff we've already got yay yeah this is not the best of pack openings although I did have a very good pack opening with uh, gadget sand so you can't win them all. Chittering Tunner. Again, this is a Silithid, one of the worker type Silithid, which obviously tunnels stuff. And you can Silithid have big, long, winding nests that kind of look fleshy. And it's they're quite a cool, cool bug race because uh, everything just looks that little bit kind of ugh and as, as if it's spongy, spongy flesh tunnels. Lovely. Battlecry, discover a spell, deal damage to your hero equal to its cost. Okay, interesting. Very warlock card there. So he tunnels, discovers a spell, but while he's discovering a spell, he's kicking up rocks into the warlock's face and he's going, ah, 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 ah. Okay. Oh, that's quite good. <laughs> I like the little head bob. It's like a, just a little tune playing. Do, do, yeah. Although, obviously, it's meant to look like he's trying to escape. Next! What have we got now? What have we got now? What have we got? Oh, Razor Petal Volley. Add two Razor Petals to your hand that deal one damage. Okay. Interesting. Well, I don't quite know how that works. Is that... A minion that comes out and deals one damage, or is it the single petal it's talking about? And are they zero cost? Are they one cost? Because they do. I'm guessing they're zero cost. It just splits the two damage in your hand for just sort of like picking things off instead of doing the knife and getting your hero damaged. So our, our time together is nearing an end, boys and girls. We have another Tolvir there, and he's got like, I don't know what dinosaurs they are, I'm assuming they're some sort of raptor that he's got as his mates. Oh, we got an epic, and bright-eyed scout. She looks very bright-eyed and scouty. Uh, draw a card, change its cost to five. Okay. I'm guessing, obviously, you put that in control decks with heavy top ends. It looks like the Dire Horn's been chosen to represent the Warrior, which makes a lot of sense. Very a dinosaur well known for its defensive capabilities. Giant Anaconda. Summon a minion from your hand with five or more attack. Okay. Interesting. What we 
got now? Mimic pods. Binding heel. A wow staple. The binding heel. Oh, we've got another legendary, and it's the Druid Quest Jungle Giant. Summon five minions with five or more attack. And my reward is Barnabas, who I don't know what he looks like, but I think he's a long neck. That means that all of your minions cost one, from my memory. So obviously, one of the first decks I'll be, build, be, 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 be building will be a Druid Quest deck. So. Now we've just got hope that we get some more cards that we haven't got. Which doesn't look like it's going to happen. <laughs> Alright, here we go. It's the last pack, guys. I need you to send all of your goodwill my way. Of course, by the time you're watching that, watching this, that would be too late. Because I've already opened the pack. But, hopefully, if, like, time waves... Uh, like intertwining uh, and you from the future is affecting me from the past this will all work out right good here we go okay we have a common what is it this is the igneous elemental which we've probably received about 50 of these fuckers already and then we got Another common. Okay, so it's flame. It's flame geyser. And it's again. We've received this quite a lot, but I'm still still optimistic. That's a oh oh. Well, I'm no longer optimistic. We've got the rock ball hunter. The rock ball hunter. We've already got like fifty of him. Okay, next one. The air elemental. Again, we we've seen this guy a lot. Can't be targeted by spells or hero powers. Hmm, interesting. And then we finally have. Our last rare is the Cornered Sentry, which we didn't have, so there's a positive to end on. So, there you have it. All of the cards from my pre-purchase, Woo, of Angoro. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this pack opening. Of course, I couldn't give you any insight because I'm rubbish, but Law of the Card should hopefully be back soon. Uh, trademark because I get internet in my new flat on the 11th so I will be working from then to try and get out a lot of the cards as soon as I possibly can got a few things actually coming up around that time as well which is yay uh, but either way hopefully within about four days five days of that day I will try and get something out for you but thank you so much for watching and until next time happy heartstoning well,